one would expect normally that in a situation where you are skills constrained, that government would move from labor intensive technology to capital intensive technology and eliminate as many jobs as possible. And you would expect, therefore, to see that manufacturing would maintain its position as a contributor to GDP. But what this says is that even as we have declined from a manufacturing perspective, we have shown exactly the same decline in jobs. So we have not seen capital intensive manufacturing rise to replace jobs intensive manufacturing, which is, I think, a matter of some concern. So we've lost, since 1989, half a million jobs in manufacturing, which is a, a depressing number given our rate of employment in South Africa. At the same time, we have shrunk from a level that you would expect, again back to the McKinsey graph of uh, about 24% contribution to GDP, we're now sitting at 12 to 13%. So there's a, there's a real sense here that, that we need to turn this graph around. And if we turn this graph around and you extrapolate, and, and, and this is theoretical and, it's, and it's, uh, it's a really simplistic comparison, but if we are able to turn manufacturing around to its former glory as a 25% contributor to GDP, you could create around about a million jobs for this country if the data in this graph is to be believed, and this is from the Reserve Bank and Stats SA, so I think it's pretty accurate. So there's an enormous opportunity to encourage manufacturing in South Africa and address some of our very serious socio-economic and socio-political challenges that we face. And I think this is an exciting opportunity uh, that deserves the attention of government and industry. But before we can do that, we need to get a couple of things right. First of all, we need to be competitive internationally. And in order to be competitive internationally, we need to identify what our competitive advantages are and what our comparative advantages are. You're probably all familiar with Ricardo's laws and on what you should make and what you should rather import. And one of the conclusions that I've come to is that as a country, we have been so sheltered behind uh, import replacement. And this is a legacy of the past, driven to a large extent by sanctions, that we became self-sufficient and we made everything ourselves. But now that the, the tariff barriers have dropped, we are exposed as subscale, in some instances, out of date, behind the investment curve, and we need to catch up. But we need to be very careful where we catch up. We need to catch up in those areas where we have a true competitive advantage. Uh, it's no good going up against the Chinese uh, in everything that they do. We need to pick those industries where we believe we have a sustainable competitive advantage. I would immediately say that NAMPAC is ideally positioned to be that competitive player uh, provided we get some things right, uh, and there, there is some fixing that we need to do. We need to invest in new capacity. What we have done as a country is, again, we, we have not invested as we should have. So look at how China has invested in uh, fixed capital, uh, significantly higher than what we should have been investing at in terms of a percentage of GDP. So we've invested like a mature economy. We've invested like Germany. And I would argue that if you compare us to some of our other emerging market peers, we would, we would look very, very bad indeed. So why haven't we invested? Uh, is there a corporate investment strike going on in South Africa, as some politicians would have us believe? Now, the, the government has done a couple of things, um, and, and credit to them. Uh, we, we've had the Industrial Policy Action Plan, which goes by the uh, interesting acronym of IPAP. We've had one and two. 
Then we've had Section 12I of the Income Tax Act, which has been hugely beneficial to NAMPAC in terms of tax credits for investing in uh, job-creating and energy-efficient production. So uh, thanks to Treasury for, for uh, giving us some tax back. The Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program run by the DTI or MSEP. Unfortunately, that program has run out of money because it received too many applications. So that's a, that's a challenge for us. And then, of course, the Competition Commission, and with my former past at Sassel, I'm very familiar with uh, all of these investigations. There has been a move to try and stimulate uh, further competition and make us as an economy more competitive. But I don't think that, that that's the entire picture because there are some real structural issues that we, that we need to address. Labor and flexibility, I think, even though I praise the Germans for, for coping with an inflexible treasury regime or a, or a labor regime, if you, if you look at the consequences of um, restrictions on labor broking, for example, and the number of jobs that were destroyed as a consequence. One, one has to ask, you know, are these interventions really successful in creating jobs or are they destroying jobs? Collective bargaining, I think one, one cannot uh, lump together companies of different sizes and different remuneration structures in one collective bargaining forum and then expect uh, a 10% increase across the board to be a sustainable way of going about it because eventually some parts of labor will price itself out of the market and then action is taken. And, and that surely, again, cannot be in the interests of creating growth and employment in this country. Topical point, visa challenges. Um, as some of you may know, we've had some issues with our glass furnace. One of our solutions, we wanted to import some skills. Getting a work permit for a foreigner to come and work in South Africa and assist us, and th these are not skills that are readily available in South Africa, is a real challenge. And I think, again, we need to, we need to remove those blockages. We shouldn't see foreign skills as a, as a threat. We should see it as an opportunity for us to learn and to grow our own capability in this country. And then, of course, I think we can improve on our port infrastructure, on our railway infrastructure, on our road infrastructure uh, in order to enable business to create wealth for the country.